Good day, everyone. My name is James Esenkuma Amagbe. I'm from the University of Port Harcourt, River State, Nigeria. Um, I'll be coordinating the dialogue today. I'll be the moderator. Um, in our panel, we have Dr. Mari Agata Oza. We also have uh, Dr. Mari Agata Oza is um, from the University of Port Harcourt, also Nigeria. We also have um, Dr. Nnam Glory. Nnam Glory is a staff of uh, the Joint Admission and Matriculations Board, Nigeria. She will be joining us from Abuja. We also have Peremo Bowe Aibatonye Fatai. She is a student of the Nam Diazikiwe University, Oka. Um, these are the ones that will be presenting today. We have, we have other members of the panel that uh, will be sitting down with us to join the discussion. We have um, Anthony Okoro, he's an engineer at the University of Port Harcourt. We also have Marse Kek Nturem. She's a lecturer also at the University of Port Harcourt. So we are ready to have a wonderful dialogue. From the other end, I'm seeing um, Professor Christian Oyeji. Um, he's also here to support us from Nigeria. Um, I believe that as we begin this dialogue, we will have a fruitful deliberation. The sequence of our presentation is already is ready. We'll get a first video introducing the, um, the discussion from me, Dr. James, and then Peremo Bowie's video will follow and um, Nam Glory will follow after that. Then Dr. Mari Agata will crown it all up. Then we'll open the floor for you to ask your questions and we'll continue the, the, the dialogue. Over to you, Carlos. Hello, you're welcome to the ICTM Decolonization 2021. Finally, we have come to the last dialogue for the year 2021, and I'm excited to be part of this dialogue. Um, we will be dialoguing on the topic towards decolonization of Nigerian music education. And with me on this panel, we have Dr. Mari Agata Oza from the University of Port Harcourt. We also have Dr. Nam Glory. Um, she's a staff of the Joint Admission and Matriculations Board at Abuja. And uh, we have um, a doctoral student, um, Peramo Bowei Fatai. Uh, and then myself, I am Dr. Isinkuma James Amagbe. I am from the University of Port Harcourt also. So we will be talking about decolonization of music education in Nigeria. Um, it's always good for us to look at this from this perspective because the first thing you need to look about decolonization um, is that the, 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 the decolonization of music program at all levels of education is to first return to what music means in our African society. And what does music mean in our African society? Music in African societies is important for our day-to-day -day activities. Music is used to pass on or to pass down stories from one generation to another. Music is also used for rituals. Music is used uh, for religion, music is also um, used to stimulate dance and celebration. Now, in the first place, when we talk about to return to what music means in our African society, the, uh, we are looking at the process of teaching and learning music, um, its uses and the objectives and subsequent ends to be achieved in undergoing a training program in music. These new approaches and theories, being traditional, 
can be integrated into the classroom teaching learning process. Now, just using Nigerian examples is not decolonization. No, it's not. Um, but it is important to note that the educational system exists in Nigeria prior to the coming of the Western colonial masters. Such education was basically inductive in nature. It was uh, for inducting members of the society into specific activities and mood of thoughts. In traditional African societies, music is conceived as a social cultural phenomenon with um, the advent of Western education, the awareness for formal music education was created through the inclusion of music in the school's curriculum. Well, this dialogue, are we doing the introduction, the introductory part of it? Uh, we'll be looking at uh, the integration of Nigerian traditional music in classroom teaching learning. Uh, the issues of scoring Nigerian redeeming patterns and melodies, um, expanding traditional teaching methods, and other salient uh, issues will be discussed in this dialogue. Our data for this paper was collected through liber uh, library research and our observations all through uh, the period of teaching and learning process. Now, post-colonial music education in Nigeria is modeled predominantly on European and American content and methodology. Uh, these Euro-American centered models, they emphasize Nigerian indigenous pedagogical materials and approaches, which to a large extent have become less attractive and often unaccepted options in the classroom teaching learning process. While a good number of the music education programs and curricula, especially at the tertiary level, are intended to be bi-musical, the content and focus are often heavily skewed towards European and American music. The near neglect of indigenous knowledge system and cultural practice has to some extent impeded the success of music education in cultural heritage preservation and its relevance in Nigeria's developmental needs. Several African scholars, including Okafo, Nzewi, Habit, Okwade, Adeogu, Ago, Mwakba, Okoro, and Amagbe, Oloru Shogo and Oloru Shogo, and Onyeji have highlighted and taken critical positions on the foregoing situation. Here Onyeji notes that there is a growing feeling of exclusion, otherness, and loss of identity in musical arts studies in many African formal learning institutions at the moment. This rises from the constant structuring or teaching and learning of musical arts along Western patterns in content and methodology dovetailing from Africa's contact with the West and formative experience and expertise therefrom of musical arts educators in African institutions have been quite limited to the exclusive training rooted in Western structures and practices. Undoubtedly, there is an urgent need to realign and optimize the music educational system in Nigeria for increased functional equity and development relevance. This realignment requires conscious effort, uh, the constructing and dismantling the colonial hegemonic influence on Nigerian music education while integrating and entrenching um, indigenous pedagogical models and materials, Dara Mola and Ayeyemi in 2008 and 2009 affirmed that the cultural acuity that has already been created in Nigerian youth by the lack of access to traditional African music can only be redeemed if music education with emphasis on 
traditional music materials in the curriculum is given its pride of place. On his part, a dollar in 2005 adds that at the tertiary level, the music curriculum should be established on African music theory and practice, however, with an inclusion of music content of other world cultures. Yes, you can't throw uh, the, the the baby and the dirty water together. After passing the baby, you throw away the water and then you preserve the baby. Okay. Our indigenous educational methodology had always given a way to spontaneous creativity by way of allowing each individual to express himself in a collective manner. When students are given enough space, it enables the, uh, it enables the privilege of expressing who they are as regards creativity. Nzewi and Nzewi in 2007 persist that the indigenous methodology did not emphasize on unnecessary verbalization because human groups are homogeneous and intellectual development was a process of habitual osmosis. Rather, it took the form of practical analytical process and gives the learner space and challenge to perform and thereby to reflect self into a knowledge paradigm. This, edu this education procedure enabled mass education in spontaneity and creativity. Inclusion of indigenous music in school curriculum activities has many roles and benefits. Indigenous game songs is one of the most important elements in the transfer of cultural heritage. Traditional forms of music are considered to be the chief carriers of cultural heritage. Folk music, which come to mind at the mention of traditional music, is a subdivision of culture as a generic cultural nucleus and at the same time involves many other subdivisions and futures of culture which includes game songs now these indigenous game songs create in pupils the right and lifelong atmosphere for socialization eliminating stripes and building unity and oneness as they grow the use of game songs in school curriculum motivates the students to learn their indigenous language um, with ease. These, uh, these songs are for both personal and group entertainment and are so interesting and fascinating that the songs induce people to perform excellently without fear or shame, making these young ones emotionally stable. It is through these recreational songs that children share their sense of belonging, social integration and friendliness. When these songs are introduced to say primary school pupils, they will learn and grow with it, knowing the moral lesson and cultural heritage transferred to them through the songs. NAM and NAM 2019 states that the use of these indigenous game songs during the outdoor activities, which includes games and sports, among other things, will motivate them to exercise more. According to Ibekwe and Ojuku in 2019, also, the young ones learn through guided listening, observation, imitation, and participation. But according to Olo Shogo, Colonialism and its educational system, which we imbibed, had slowly, gradually, steadily destroyed and attempted to erode traces of this traditional method as passing on the culture to the younger generation. Ugo and Ugoma in 2014 advanced that music candidates are to study music with the aim of passing music examination. This is one of the Western mental colonialism or colonization that is very strong 
in a uh, psychic. Music as a cause or subject should be all encompassing and should not be particular genre taking the lead. Traditional music should be made to take a prominent place in our classroom teaching and learning process as this will help sustain our culture. Every time the, um, and place humans or culture collide, there is bound to be borrowing and imbibing of useful elements of each other's culture. We are free to continue borrowing, yes, but that does not mean that we should become enslaved. So the call today is to emancipate ourselves from intellectual slavery. Now from the foregoing, the following have been preferred as a panacea to the decolonization of music education in Nigeria. I'll tell you a story before I mention some of them and I move on to the next person that will give us a talk today. I read a story of Booker T. Washington, who is a black, the first black educator to build the University for Blacks. He knew that he had gained his freedom and um, he no longer think uh, like a slave. So he was working like a free man. One day he was passing through an all-white society and as he was going through that street, a white lady saw him as, you know, look, look, uh, look at a black man and then called him, hey nigger, come here. And Bugatti Washington just moved to her. He knew that he was no more a slave. He has put all slavery thoughts out of his mind. He was just working as a normal human being. But the lady saw him as a nigger. She called him and said, take off your suit and help me heal this wood. He did not bother. He, he had some time, so he went ahead and did that. She never knew that he was the famous black educator, Booker T. Washington. And he finished doing that. Another white lady saw what happened, what transpired between the two of them. So he finished doing that and asked her, anything else? And she said, no, that's all for now. So he left the lady as he was moving out of the premises. The other white lady rushed to the, to the other woman and said, wow, do you know what you just did? You just called that famous black educator to heal wood for you? And she said, he's a nigger, a nigger is a nigger. I said, no, that is not an ordinary nigger. It's the famous black educator, Booker T. Washington. And she said, ah, I never knew. So if she had known, she would have sent him that message. Well, she ran after him and called him back. And Booker T. Washington went back and said, can I help you, ma'am? And she said, please, I'm sorry. I should have addressed you the way I did. Is there anything I can do for you? And he said, well, but he's trying to raise money to build um, a university so that his black brothers can study and get educated. And she said, consider it done. She was part of those that raised funds to help raise that university. What if he had not emancipated himself from that mental slavery, if he thought he was still a slave? A fight would have broke out between the two of them. There will have been a disagreement. The same thing happened when Nelson Mandela came out from prison. Nelson Mandela came out from prison and the first thing he did was to unite his people. The man that threw him into prison, he still brought him out and united South Africa. South Africa is great today because of Nelson Mandela. Now that he's not there, you can see that there's fighting everywhere. One of the things that we need to do about decolonization is to first emancipate ourselves from mental slavery. Now, some of the things we'll be discussing, the topics that my colleagues will be looking at will include decolonization efforts in our musical education, uh, needs to start with the mind of the teachers themselves, the false narrative about our African music and education prior to colonization needs to be corrected in our minds first to enable us effectively transmit same to the pupils and the student. 
um, I'll play a video by the time I finish all this and you will see what I'm talking about. Our, the second thing is our indigenous music and teaching learning models, including classroom paradigms and structure should be adopted as much as possible. Our decolonization effort should not jettison beneficial resources from the present content. We should not grow uh, throw away the baby with the bath water. For example, adopting of augmented reality technologies and other ICT resources could help create a uh, near authentic experience of the cultural materials and phenomena for the study, especially where such cultures have been extinct or are not easily accessible to the students. Four, wholesome and holistic teaching and learning, especially from a multidisciplinary perspective, should be encouraged and adopted. Five, activities-based methodologies should be emphasized as they are best suited to the human neurocognitive and social uh, emotive functions and mechanisms. Now, six, there are some documented li li literatures of theories of African music, such as those of Professor Dan Sisi Argo from the Analysis of African Music, Dr. Anthony Mirini, Tone System and Melody, uh, Sam Akbabot, Richard Okafo, Professor Mekin Zewi, just to mention a few. African musicologists can follow their lead, research further, and agree on which theories are acceptable then adopt them. Seven, it is vital to also discover African theories and apply same as theoretical framework to buttress research into studies in music, especially in tertiary institutions. Eight, teaching and learning methods originally uh, African, such as the approach of learning by the use of the hands and the body should be um, reclaimed and rebranded as they promote and recall the replication of the acquired skill. Nine, space should be created in the course of teaching so students can express themselves in the indigenous ways. Ten, students in secondary and uh, tertiary levels should be taken on excursions or encouraged to have cultural contacts in different communities so as to help them discover new musical idioms, new rhythms and uh, movements, new sights and sound that will interest them and spur them up to be more creative. This will in turn create um, reminiscence and further motivate their desire to embrace originality thereby helping the process of decolonization. 11. It is imperative that the subject music be separated from CCA, the Creative and Cultural Arts, in the primary and secondary school curriculum. This should be directed through Sumen and her name. I think Gloria and Nam will be discussing this particular topic. The, uh, the, uh, my colleagues will be talking about three from these 11 that have been listed here and then we will get something good but before we uh, be, 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 before i leave i'll play something that we uh, re recorded from some of our students we give them african pieces as their major pieces during exams sometimes we mix them maybe you give two african pieces and then you give one western piece to keep uh, learning alive and then we also allow them to uh, have an ensemble of African instruments together with the piano. The piano speaks Nigeria. <laughs>
Thank you very much for listening. I am Aibatonye Fatai Peremo Buiri, and the title of my presentation is Utilizing the Functionality of African Music in the Decolonization Process of Music Education in Nigeria. Introduction The records of anthropologists historians, and colonial officials during pre-colonial and colonial periods who sought to study and document African cultures reveal that there were functional systems of education present within African societies. Music making was one distinct aspect of education within the society. The notion of formal education in Nigeria was first introduced by Christian missionaries who established the foundations of Western education around 1842. It was introduced for the purpose of indoctrination of the locals into the Christian faith and subsequent spread of the faith. The colonialists further utilized this education as a prerequisite to work for their government. As such, all learning was that which would serve their purposes. The content reflected their system of education. Kelly and Adbach defined the process as an attempt to assist in the consolidation of foreign rule. This became the system of education that was eventually bequeathed to Nigeria. Statement of the Problem Music educators have constantly grappled with the lack of students' drive in the study of music and reached various conclusions that bear largely on the absence of indigenous relevance. Adedeji highlighted the Western domination of the music curricula in Nigeria since the inception of the study. He stated that music education needs to be made relevant to the needs of the society for it to be more embraced. This is as a result of the colonial influence on the structure of music education, which is continually being addressed at the policy-making levels. The philosophy of education in Nigeria was formed on the bedrock of the Western system of education. The consequence of this is that all forms of literacy in Nigeria became patterned to the colonial system and its goal for education. The attainment of independence from British rule necessitated the need for education to be relevant to the goals and aspirations of the new nation. It became a difficult task as the philosophy of education in the country was not structured to its development. Thus arose the need for a functional system of education that would reflect what education should truly provide for its, for its citizenry as reflected in the National Policy on Education, 1981. The utilitarian element of African music is not reflected in the Nigerian music curriculum. The curriculum in itself did not say that Nigerian material should not be used, yet its philosophical axis rotates around study materials, practical examples, and theory of Western origin, thereby revealing the influence of colonization. This has created a lacuna in the classroom presentation of music education. It is evident that what translates as the music curriculum is not what relates to the musical needs 
of the Nigerian society as observed in the, in the development of various genres of traditional music in Nigeria into contemporary musical forms that are not reflected in the music curriculum, evidencing this disconnect between what is being studied and what is required in the society of the utilization of functional traditional education. An inward look into correcting the philosophical discrepancies that bedevil the study of music at all levels of education is vital to our drive towards the decolonization of the music curricula. Nzewi asserts that African music, African music sciences and arts cannot be con cognitively perceived, analyzed, and appreciated in isolation of the utility intentions and deployments which inform the unique indigenous theoretical principles that underpin structural and formal conformations. Emeka, in comparing the structure and objectives of Western education and traditional education, outlined the following as the nature and aims of traditional education this. It is a whole way of life, is measured loosely through its effect on life, is a lifelong activity, directed and operated by the society who sets its aims and objectives and evaluates it, is dynamic with the dynamic environment, has practical foundation and is functional, product is always employed and a useful citizen, lays strong emphasis on character and on conformity with the norms and values holding in the society, and accommodating and even today runs concurrent with Western education. To this end, Akuma iterates that the educational system of a country is specific and unique to the cultural and socio-economic conditions of the country and cannot, therefore, be influenced except from within. Hence, the need for the decolonization of the curriculum by Nigerians to suit our own internal developmental needs at all levels of education to reflect the ends of music education within our society. The ends of traditional music education, as detailed by Ibekwe and Onwekwe, are rich and replete with merits, which reflects the present aims of education and should therefore be utilized for educational purposes. As such, the study of music must reflect the involvement in an activity and experience which underpins the philosophical understanding and end as expected by the cultural structure of the society where it is reflected. Apart from listening to and enjoying music for entertainment, a lot of lessons are learned in terms of moral values through the lyrics of the music. Nzewi therefore asserts that the profound indigenous African legacy needs to be advanced into modern utility. It is pertinent to note that education has had many definitions that revolve around the same idea. Among the myriads of relevant definitions of education, those offered by Jowitt, Treble, Fafuan, Ezocha, and Okafo capture the essence of the concept of education in relation to its functionality in the Nigerian society. One main goal of education is to develop a total, 
independent individual who has acquired skills for personal and communal problem solving and contribution to societal advancement. To achieve this goal, education must be functional. This therefore calls for a need to visit to revisit what education was before the advent of Western education, to foray the positive uses in pre-colonial society so as to utilize its benefits in contemporary Nigerian milieu. There is no gainsaying that Western education brought meaningful contributions and developments to our societies, except that the form of education that was, prov that was provided could not meet the developmental needs of the Nigerian nation. Rather, it further created a colonial mentality which till present has produced lacunas between theory and practice in various fields of study of which music is one. Recommendations the Nigerian educational system must imperatively be retailored towards our sociocultural and economic ends. In this light, the structure of music education, which was handed down to us from the colonialists, need to be retailored to suit its aims and objectives in our society. We are to modify it to suit our societal needs. The following recommendations are preferred for the attainment of a functional music curricula hinged on traditional education. Music education should reflect the philosophy of, of music within traditional Nigerian society. The traditional system of education should be utilized in the teaching of music in the classroom. The present music curriculum should be reviewed to attain functionality within our national objectives, not jettisoned, as it is a development of millennia of study across civilizations whose origins have been traced to have started from Egypt here in Africa. Traditional musicians, who are the custodians of our musical knowledge, should be involved in the pursuit of this end as they have got a lot to teach us. At the tertiary level of education, African musicologists and theorists should, as a matter of urgency, work on the systemization of the theory of African music. Primary and secondary school music curricula should be tailored to contain more of African practical examples, utilization of the existing theories of music for the attainment of a functional music education program that promotes the acquisition of relevant skills that meets the needs and expectations of society. Finally, policy makers educational administrators and curriculum developers have to take responsibility in ensuring that the in ensuring the transition of decisions bordering on functional education from boardrooms to the classrooms in conclusion social appeal and inclination towards contemporary traditional musical styles show that traditional music continues to play a pivotal role in the various aspects of our society. Incorporation of traditional music education remains the roadmap to the attainment of a functional end of the music program at all levels of education. Thank you. Toward the colonization of curricula in Nigerian musical at education. Our national policy on education made provision for music at the various levels of schooling in Nigeria. 
how far this government position is in consonance with current reality justifies the need for reform. It is against this backdrop that this panel's discussion focused on toward the colonization of curricula in Nigerian musical arts education. This is with the view to draw inference, make deduction, and address some issues in order to have an effective music education delivery system in schools in Nigeria. Music is one of the oldest subjects in Nigeria schools, but music as a school subject is being relegated to the background. It is desirably desirable that a lasting solution be provided that will bring about a total overhaul of a school curriculum, change people's attitude to music education and positively influence the method of teaching music for music education to attend a school in Nigeria and to meet specific needs of the society. That is what our panel seeks to achieve. Before the advent of the colonial master in Nigeria, musical performance had been a common feature of day-to-day -day life experience in Nigeria. These experiences are enshrined in social function, religious belief system, ritual ceremonies, recreation and occupation. Music at this time was purely traditional and indigenous to the people of the particular ethnic group in which it was performed. Music education at this level was solely informal since there was no school system or formal education. However, music education began, formal music education began around the middle of the 19th century with the Western Missionary Movement and the Colonial Administration in Nigeria. Ahanotu noted that the prominent emphasis on Western rather than African system of music education in Nigeria school has since continued till now. Tracy observed that indigenous music, which did not appear to be directly connected with spiritual or social uplift, were tabooed whenever mission schools were established. The dreaded and the condemned um, style of singing as the <clears throat> associated our musical instruments with various idols. The above submission quickly brings to bear the plans of the colonial master who ultimately became the power policy maker in Nigeria because it actually paved way for the inclusion of Western music education in Nigeria schools. Music as a classroom subject then became mostly Western theory with little practice. And in, in, his, in the view of Nzewi, consumption with various theory rather than theory in practice continued to ignite unnecessary tension in contemporary education and scholarship arena. Ogisi observed that for a long time, formal music education in Nigeria has operated Western music education, which has faced several challenges arising from the inability to connect with the people it is meant to serve. Through the years, practitioners and music educators are perceived as cultivating an art without relevance, whereas it is relevant to ensure the patronage of any art form in society. There is therefore an alienation that stems from the reposition of African traditional music education and imposition of Western music education. Although the restoration of African traditional music education has begun and is deepening, music education in Nigeria is yet to be African sensed. He believed that it is only through the decolonization rules and means that music education in Nigeria can transit to Nigeria music education. With all these people saying one thing about music education, this panel wants to emphasize that the future direction of music education in a country in Nigeria rests on the restructuring of the general music curriculum. Decolonizing the curriculum and integrating uh, indigenous music into the classroom teaching and learning is a lot easier and achievable. This starts from the primary and junior secondary curriculum where music is subsumed under cultural and creative arts. 
there is need to review the curriculum because the primary and junior secondary school curriculum objective did not say teach them Western music first, then cheap in African music. Music teachers and the curriculum planners used the mind to create a music curriculum using what they learned from the colonial master and has since been passing it down from generation to generation, not orally this time, but in written form. Looking at educational curriculum, according to Kelly, curriculum is all the learning which is planned and guided by the school, whether it is carried out in group or individually. In other words, curriculum specifies in advance what we are seeking to achieve and how we can go about it. Educational curriculum being the set of courses and their content offered at school or university is planned by curriculum experts. We also know that music education is the art of transmitting and imparting musical knowledge according to the requirements of the educational curriculum. Now, what is the objective of the music curriculum? The music curriculum this curriculum states the objective of music teaching as essentially to develop learners' musical skill. It largely emphasizes the individual skill acquisition, aesthetic development, cultural awareness, and self-fulfillment of the student. If this is the objective of music curriculum in senior secondary in secondary schools, then it is time to decolonize the content of the music curriculum, which is most time far from what is stated in the above objective. A learner one asked, once asked me, Miss Glory, what am I going to do with the life history of Chopin? Will it teach me how to sing or play a musical instrument? How I convinced my best students to stay for the rest of that class is a story for another day. The challenges facing the music curriculum are finding is simple. We teach our learners how to learn classical and western form of music while the learner loves to listen and appreciate our indigenous bidu when i'm talking of bidu bidu is music ogisi 2 19 pointed out that one of the challenge was a position of a music education system that was not developed by african on african however the music education superimposed was ineffective in delivering the musical needs of the society we cannot keep forcing the learners to learn what the colonial master feels is good for them when the reality of our country shows the need to learn and be grounded in our own form of music. Our learners live and observe what is going on in our society. We are an untrained musician that can make correct indigenous video is celebrated more than a music professor that sings through his own nostrils in the name of singing Western music. That was what a young learner told me. We have to review and restructure our music curriculum to reflect the reality of our lives as a nation. When I say indigenous, we do, it is not traditional music. It is the music we hear and appreciate around us. It can be juju, abala, high life, reggae, hip hop, juju, fuji, afrobeat, waka, shakara, egogene, gospel, afro juju, which some of our music educators may not want to associate with. If our music educators do not like our indigenous music, how then do they teach the learners? According to Nam and Madu, a child learns by observing the adults. According to Ibekwe and Ujuku, the young ones learn through guided listening, observation, and imitation. But Olori Shongo argues that colonialism and its educational system that we adopted that we adopted and imbibe has slowly, gradually, steadily destroyed and attempted to erode traces of this traditional method of passing on the culture to the young ones. Now we have the cultural and creative arts. Cultural and creative art was introduced as a subject in place of music, fine arts, and fine and applied arts and drama, which now, which before now were distinct subjects studied separately in schools. 
Ojuku and Oyuki stated that CCA is an umbrella term that brings together these three arts subject area. The Nigeria Educational Research and Development Council listed cultural and creative arts as one of the core basic subjects in the new nine-year basic education in Nigeria. The aim is to develop the students' acquisition of cultural repertoire, aesthetic perception, artistic talent, creativity, and expression. The implementation of the curriculum course commenced nationwide in Primary 1 and GS1 since September 2, 2008, respectively. The old curriculum was then systematically phased out. I have to say this. After studying the CCA and the old junior secondary school curriculum, curricula closely, I observed and that the colonization of music education in Nigeria has started by adding music up to make up the CCA. A good look at the contents of the subject CCA showed that it reflects our African ideology. It really aimed at decolonizing music education and the other arts in the primary and junior secondary school level. The CCA tried to include our indigenous music more than the Western form, music form. But the problem with the CCA curriculum is that music is minor while the other form of arts are dominant. And again, music teachers at this level want music to be the subject on its own. Why do we need to review the curriculum? There is need to review the music curriculum because it is the main guide to the music educator on what to teach the learner. Now, we do not have music as a subject from just one to just from primary one to GSS three, which is the basic education level, and this affects the study of music in senior secondary school, where music stands alone as a subject. At this at this stage, the patronage of music as a subject is quite low. There is need to review the curriculum to either add more music content to CCA or remove music from CCA. One cannot teach music in junior secondary school without curriculum, as there is no music curriculum at all at this stage. In my country, Nigeria, even if you know something but did not pass it in examination, it is assumed that you do not know it. That is why the curriculum needs to be reviewed and restructured to suit the needs of a Nigerian learner who must answer uniform questions in a standard examination. There is nothing like I will teach them what is in, not in the curriculum using my discussion. We have a plan. Our plan is our first work is sensitization to get our music educators and policy makers to unlearn and relearn how to accept our indigenous music culture. When that is done, the issue of curriculum reform will now start and it will not be a problem. Things that we need to review. One is to remove all the foreign matching songs and all the game songs, foreign game songs, and replace them with our indigenous songs. Two is to use our indigenous practical art pieces in place of Western one. Instead of putting African music studies as once in a while topic, let it take the major periods in place of music of the other world culture. The use of our indigenous art music composed by our people for practical examples during classes and examination is, instead of classical music is to be encouraged. And let the culture and tradition of our people be felt in the curriculum as music is a major part of our culture. Then African music should be introduced. African music theory should be introduced and there is a, and this should be a gradual and there should be a gradual withdrawal of the Western music education method applied in study of music now. Now what do we add? When we have removed all this, what do we add? Following the constructivism theory, we state that learners should learn from their immediate environment. Emphasis on this theory is placed on prior knowledge and experience of the learner. We suggest a curriculum that starts from what the learners are used to. Music forms, music appreciation, dance, 
We has a history of African music, single family and indigenous tune, African musical instrument, pitch identification, musical skill that is pentatonic skill that is attributed to the Africans. Another another skills before we go to the new to diatonic and other skills. History of Western, then we go to history of Western music and all those things. Now, when we are done, we develop a curriculum that suits a Nigerian purpose. According to Onyeji, he suggests that a simple approach could be to assemble all known eth ethnographic and musicological studies on Nigeria indigenous music to sever the relevant principles and pedagogical materials for curriculum development. The music educators and Nigeria researchers cannot just draft a curriculum and start using it with out necessary procedure of, of approval from the Federal Ministry of Education. On this, our panel plan that that with the help of our team, that is with the help of our team to develop a music curriculum that will suit our African purpose and then in conjunction with other African STM members in Nigeria and other music bodies as bodies like Association of Nigerian Musicologists and the Society of Music Educators of Nigeria Summit to open a dialogue with the federal government in order to introduce and propose a developed curriculum to the government's agency saddled with the responsibility of curriculum development, seeking a review of the old and an approval of the new curriculum. We may say, how do we source uh, materials? We may ask how we, we can source for our for mat materials for indigenous music when the curriculum is well adjusted to suit our African purpose material on surface. This happened with the cultural and creative arts. When it first started, everyone was worried about the structural material to be used, but our indigenous authors worked out something using the content of the curriculum. My point here is that if our indigenous authors can produce material for CCA, then Producing materials needed for teaching of our indigenous music will not be a big problem once the curriculum is restructured. Ogisi explained that with respect to music, Africa made their own instrument from resources in the environment, developed rhythm as a musical element to the high level that baffled other races, developed music concept theories, paradigm that manifests in performance. We can develop materials needed for teaching our indigenous music. Our panel therefore recommend that in line with our plan to develop develop a, a, a curriculum that since music curriculum development in Nigeria is the sole responsibility of the federal government through agencies established for that like the National Educational Research and Development Council NERDC it is appropriate that professional bodies in Nigeria like International Council of Traditional Music in Nigeria Association of Nigerian Musicologists and Society for National Educate for Music Educators in Nigeria, made up of professors, doctors, and master degree holders, and other music teachers in primary and secondary school should be consulted before policies are adopted regarding curriculum in music. These bodies must, as a matter of urgency, put pressure on the federal government of Nigeria to review the existing school, existing school music curriculum and insist that the policy makers must be those who are professionals in an area. There is need for funding to be made available to our indigenous researchers. This is not readily available in our country though for research, for research and development of suitable curriculum. Then the method of teaching should start from unknown, from known to unknown teaching them about our indigenous music before introducing the Western music test studies. Simple. We therefore advocate for a restructured curriculum that will suit our African purpose. 
teaching the learners from known to unknown as did to make music education to be relevant in Nigeria once again. It is a gradual process towards the decolonization of curricula in Nigeria musical arts education and not a spontaneous event. Thank you. Hello, my name is Dr. Marie Agatha Ozma from the Department of Music, University of Port Harcourt. I am delighted to be part of this dialogue on decolonization of music education in Nigerian educational system. Many African, particularly Nigerian scholars, have insisted on the need to modify, if not change, the Nigerian curricula, which presently is strongly rooted in Euro-American structures, practice, and patterns. While this discourse and awareness have been on for over a decade, actual results are yet to be evidenced in Nigerian schools at all levels. A survey on the curriculum of or curricula of most schools in Nigeria still demonstrates heavily Western-based patterns of education and minimal indigenous patterns of learning, which are grounded on intuitive creativity rooted in cultural norms, ideas, and behaviors. This indigenous methodology, which according to Nziwi, took the form of practical analytical process that gives the learner space and challenge to perform and thereby to reflect self into a knowledge paradigm. This education procedure enables mass education in spontaneity and creativity is yet to be actualized in Nigerian schools. This dialogue aims at bringing to the foreground some effective ways of decolonizing Western methodologies used in most Nigerian schools and posits some traditional methods of imbuing knowledge that could be adopted and used in conjunction with some Euro-American methods. I will discuss a few. The use of folk songs to replace Western rhymes in schools, particularly in primary and kindergarten schools, can never be overemphasized. How can a Nigerian child, an African child, particularly a West African child, relate with a rhyme that talks about winter, autumn, spring, snow. Arguably, one can say the child is even exposed, is being exposed to weather conditions of other parts of the world. However, if the child understands their climate and environment, they could stand a better chance of comprehending that of others. Let us talk about folk tales. Storytelling, which often includes songs, was one of the most effective ways of inculcating traditional norms and lessons to children. I remember vividly to this day some of the folk tales my grandmother told us in the evenings. They were loaded with lessons, morals, etc that one can remember and utilize when confronted with a similar situation in real life. Storytelling could be introduced in schools and students could be encouraged to write stories which they would share with their classmates and even publish. This method could be used to encourage creativity and creative writing. Writing stories that include short songs, as in the case of folk tales, will help the students develop also their songwriting and compositional skills. In this way, combining literature and music, both great ways of artistic expression. In this regard, modern day technologies will be very handy in aiding students to document their creations. 
My research on women's rituals, music, and dance in southern Nigeria has exposed me to traditional methodologies used in educating the child and the young girls or maidens as they transit to womanhood and re-enter their societies. <clears throat> Among the Yache, Yala, and Bikwara people of Northern Cross River, uh, Cross River State, the child, four to five years old, who is selected as the Iwali, literally queen, learns the norms and morals of her society through folk tales, songs, and dance. Through this method, she learns the names, movements, behaviors, and mannerisms of different animals, some of which she mimics in dance. These animals usually indulge in various activities, including embarking in journeys, holding and, take, and partaking in feasts, and many other common daily activities. For the child queen, or any child in this case, these stories are fascinating and the lessons or morals learned from them are long-lasting. The Iwali tradition demonstrates ways that dance serves as a living repository in which the social cultural ideas, values, aspirations, and history of a people are maintained and reversed. That is to say, dance not only becomes an avenue of communicating morals or even lessons, but also in communicating things serves as entertainment. In Ebu Amala, a dance drama of the Baru people of southern Nigeria, we see related and also different elements. The genre in performance tells the history of the Obaru people. Teachers, students could utilize this method and encourage students to make performances that tell the history of their people. Dance, therefore, relates to dance as drama and dance as history. Morning Kim of the Ejagam people of southeastern Nigeria and southwest Cameroon is a rite that introduces the child or the maiden to a way of life. It is a court. The monikim is secluded from the society for a period of time, sometimes from six months to two years. And during this period, she learns the norms and every facet of her culture. She even learns how to read and write the well-known Nsibidi signs, which culturally, and even to this day, is the reason of the Igwe, or the Ekwe, called or society. With the morning king, we see another dimension. We see the understanding and the way uh, a people understand aesthetics. What is beautiful? For the monikim, the whole essence of part of this seclusion is to make her to grow robust, add a little bit of weight, in fact, a lot of weight, because for the culture, that is beauty. On her graduation day, the morning king dances out of this uh, um, area of seclusion. And during this dance, she demonstrates most of what she had learned in this seclusion through body movement. So what do we see then? We see a dance that tells not just stories, but also relates the cultural norms of the people through body movement. We see also in the decorations on the monarchy, we see writings, 
the Isbidi writings. And so her body becomes not just a body in movement that speaks or communicates, but also a script to be read. We see a culture here that is very much grounded in knowledge and knowledge exchange. The use of musical instruments in these performances also provides another avenue of learning to those involved. The dancers, especially those discussed in these rituals, are expected to learn and know the drum language since they interact with these instruments during performance. <clears throat> Traditionally, acquisition of this knowledge are required for performance. Understanding and thus interacting with the instrumentalist during performance makes for a meaningful and well-coordinated performance. This element, if introduced into, school, into the school curricula, will help the students and make for better expression even when they are playing Western instruments. The whole idea of community life and living are so inherent in all the processes of these music and dance genres can be infused into the school system to enable the students work cooperatively, comfortably with each other, thus improving their lifestyle and giving them a kind of holistic uh, uh, upbringing. All these learning strategies could be incorporated in the Nigerian curricula and used side by side with Western structures to enrich and enhance learning. So what is happening in Nigerian schools today? Many Nigerian schools have started incorporating some of the ideas and the above elements so I discussed so far in their curriculum. For example, Ndamli Azikiwe University, Oka, has even employed a non-academic but an Oja specialist who now teaches the students the art of playing the Oja. Students of this department now play compositions written by African pianism sensed composers. The Oja is uh, a kind of uh, flute or, or whistle, as we may want to describe it, but has two holes and yes, that sounds. But a very beautiful and um, piercing sound, which in fact, in performance, can be heard by everybody that's taking part in that performance. And the Oja speaks. So it's very important that the, 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 the sound of the Oja is shrill, piercing, and is easily heard by everybody. The, the arrival of Professor Meki Mzewi to the Department of Music at the University of Port Harcourt increased awareness of African traditions in a department that had already incorporated some Africanness in its curriculum. Meki Nzewi donated 50 djembe drums and copies of djembe drum tutor books to the department, making it easy for students to have instruments for practice and performance. The curriculum of the department now has a stronger sense of African music studies. Our students are encouraged, are strongly encouraged to research and write their projects and thesis on their cultures. For their African dance classes, for example, students are encouraged to work with themes from their cultures and put up performances that are meaningful and tell a story. This is not to say that less attention is being paid to Western curriculum patterns of education in the department, but there is a gradual merging of the two types of educational structures. 
This is also evident in instrumental performances where traditional and Western musical instruments often play side by side in performance. So we see here a tradition that is heavily based or has a lot of activity or is based on activity. So if you think about uh, most Western structures that are um, reading based and they call it armchair library based, and then you take this and you merge it with these indigenous practices that are activity based. What a rich curriculum we provide for our students. So activity based methodologies drawn from our various cultures should be emphasized as they are best suited to the human neurocognitive and social emotive functions and mechanisms. Thank you for listening. Any questions or things to discuss from the presentation? We can start talking about them. I don't think we have. Okay. Um. Can I, since uh, everybody is keeping quiet and. Uh, okay, Professor Yeji. Yeah. Okay. Let me let me, you know, uh, take it from the point of uh, thanking the panel for the presentation and for, you know, uh, bringing to the fore, you know, issues relating to our you know, education and music teaching in Nigeria at all levels, particularly at the university level. And uh, for the uh, uh, clear presentations, so to say, in that try to articulate all the issues, challenges, and problems that uh, are major concern to your panel. Um, we seem to have a clear idea of what our problems are in terms of you know, the alignment of our curricula from the primary to the university. And uh, someone, I think it was the third presenter, you know, highlighted an issue which I've also discussed recently of um, how the CCA has you know, generally undermined music education at the senior level of our study. I, I say this because it is a critical issue to us. You know, um, in her presentation also, she kind of glorified CCA in terms of uh, uh, you know, uh, bringing together the arts as it is in our indigenous system. Yes, that's okay. But music as it is has a need to you know, have an independent attention because it, it really carries a lot of concepts, ideas, and values that require 
that special attention be paid to it as an art. You know, I'm not really quarreling about, you know, uh, the content because we've already established that we need to make it African. But the point is in making it African and subsuming it in this CCA makes it even more difficult because all that training will not enable anybody come out of music with strong, you know, uh, understanding or learning of the art because most times you know up till now you what you find is that the teacher in the primary school or junior secondary most of the time has no clear knowledge of what music is all about so to them they simply play music with the children and just enjoy but focus on maybe fine arts or drama which is also part of the component so in most cases you find that music is just used as a background thing to other things like the drama the dance and or even excluded entirely because in some schools they emphasize you know uh, fine arts and the children are more at home with drawing and uh, providing you know the art in in concrete terms of you know painting and all that so what happens is in the, this process we undermine music so to say and because the foundation is not that strong, because the critical aspects of music, in terms of the concepts, even from the indigenous perspective, we are not paying attention to them. Nobody has all the time to do that because you have to struggle within the space given to CCA to handle aspects of the three subjects that are combined. And what happens? When this music becomes an autonomous subject at the senior level, there is nothing known to confront it, you know, uh, with in the sense of capacity. The students have not been trained to get into music as an independent subject. And what happens? Nobody takes music in the, at the senior level. I don't want to talk about the role of the teachers too, because most of them are not, you know, strong. But even if they are strong, the fact of the matter is that the students are scared. Nobody knows what is there because there is no continuity. Somebody who is doing chemistry or who wants to do chemistry or physics or biology at the senior level has done basic technology, has done basic science, has done all sorts of things, mathematics. And so it's a level of continuity moving into other subjects. But for music, it seems it's at the senior level that somebody is now being told to now study music and then at a higher level because the, the foundational things have not been properly articulated. And so it's confused, confusing. And that's our challenge right now. Curricula, yes. Uh, manpower, yes. Infrastructure, yes. So many things. Attitude, peer pressure, religion, yes. Culture, yes. Even now we're talking about making our music cultural. There will be people who will still kick against it because so many people have acquired new forms of religion that whatever is African is seen to be either fetish, going to hell, or in fact should not be heard of so most times in the cities families do not even talk about culture because they are seeing them as village affair so they somebody talked about orientation one of the presenters that is where we will start because uh, we have talked about mental you know uh, colonization that is where the problem is a lot of us are even more white than the westerners a lot of us are more you know, inclined to American life than the Americans. So it's a big problem that what we are looking for seem to be known, but we don't have the platform and the way to do it. So many of us have talked about this in our presentations, like it was cited before. I, I've said a lot of writings have been done. A lot of projects, master's dissertation, doctoral thesis have been presented all over the place reiterating the same thing, sometimes regurgitating the same thing, sometimes presenting some good you know, direction. So is there a way to come to bring all these things together, see out what is relevant, probably set up a small commission of curriculum planners or cur curriculum writers who can then produce something because we always do is, it is good to do this, it is good to do that, it will be wonderful to have this, it would be this and that, and nobody does it. Right now, I think our problem is ourselves because we are the ones to design. If we want to teach rhythm 
from Igbo folk song, from Yoruba folk song, from Hausa folk song. <laughs> we should go ahead and do it. We won't need to wait for anybody to do that. If we want to limit our studies to festival music, performance art, and creative methods and composers and people, indigenous music makers, we design, we say this is what we want to do because all over the world, people are getting on with their, you know, uh, own cultural presentation. If you go to um, uh, Malaysia, in Kuala Lumpur, for they, they do a lot of uh, gamelan orchestra works. Many people are involved in, Chinese people are doing their own. Once they develop all this art, yes, they can have it as the core of their learning and then bring in the Western stuff. We were all together in Thailand. There were lots, a lot of presentation of Thai music every, every day. And you see, they could even have a, a kind of hybrid of Thai and Western music. Also have Western music separate. So we should be able to you know, decide what we want. There's a lot of talking around the whole thing, but nobody's really doing anything that will say this is where we want to be. Even if we say, okay, whatever that is presented by government as curriculum, we can, we can accept and, and thank them. One thing that I have noted in you know, working with government in terms of uh, curriculum development recently is that NUC, for instance, will give you a benchmark for university standard, for university music study of all the studies. They give you a benchmark. And they, if you go for accreditation, you will know that they give special you know, point for those institutions that go, have gone beyond that benchmark to develop something new for themselves, including adding new courses and all that. So when they provide a benchmark, would, you are not forced to keep to the benchmark. You are you're expected to develop from that benchmark. So even if government produces a curriculum, we can thank them and put it in the shelf, use our own. They, we, we examine, we teach. When they, when, they, when they are tired of producing, they will take our own. Because if we keep talking to them, they may not want to listen. So what I'm thinking is that we, we develop our own curriculum, start using it, and let's start producing people with that cultural sense and knowledge and with you know, very clear musical you know, uh, 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 capacity to perform music. Because we are losing out entirely. They are not able to do this. They are not able to do that. So we have a generation that's lost almost. That's my point. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. I want to say something. It's glory. Yeah. Yes. Then, yeah. Yeah, I want to say something about the curriculum, developing our own and leaving government own. I think it can work, as I said earlier when we were discussing that, it can work in universities. But in primary school and secondary school, it's difficult to develop what is, uh, is not in the curriculum and teach them. Because at the level of uh, let's say, um, the um, first school living, they write uh, uniform exam. Junior secondary school, they write uniform exam. And um, in senior secondary school, they write uniform exam. If I should leave the CCA that have been given, me, given to me by the government and I develop a music curriculum and be teaching them, at the just, at just three exam where they are supposed to write CCA, and the, the, the students are not are only learning music instead of the whole of the whole of CCA. And I, the teacher, the, te the music teacher will be um, queried. That's what I, that's where my, my, my I'm having issue with that. Uh, um, I don't know how we go, but that's why I say that we engage in a dialogue with the government if possible. That's the um, the leaders of our, our association organizations in Nigeria. If they can engage in a dialogue with government agencies, saddles with the responsibility of developing curriculum to develop a curriculum that is suitable so that it will make the work of a music teacher easier in at that primary and secondary school level. Thank you, Prof. Yeah, okay. I am very glad you presented this. Yes, it's possible to keep at that basic level, but the fact is that. One doesn't even know the, the extent of music education going on at the primary and secondary level up to that, you know, you know GSS3. Because most times they are, they are not engaged in full music studies. And that's a big problem. So, yes, at the university level, we can, we can try, you know, move around what government is talking about. But I think if we can get good music teachers, to teach 
at the primary and secondary level, then we will have music. Right now, we have somebody doing CCA who is not trained to teach music in any way. Some, in some schools that are buoyant, they may employ one music teacher who will teach music from JS1 to JS3. And you can imagine what happens. You imagine what happens. The person runs into a class once in a while to look at the students and say a few things. And go, because the, the opportunity is not even there to, to develop anything meaningful. So it is a problem. But I think we can, of course, we can engage with the government, the ministries, and see what we can do. But uh, you know, music education in Nigeria started at the tertiary level. So we can, from that tertiary level, come down again and see what we can do. Because truly, Nigeria, we, we got it all wrong right from the beginning. There's a paper coming out I wrote recently uh, analyzing all these things. We got it wrong. That's been the challenge. We started from the top instead of from the bottom. Tertiary music education started in 1961. It started maybe at, in the secondary and primary level in the 1980s and 90s or thereabout. So you see the, the, the problem because the vacuum had been there. Nobody paid attention. A few people tried to start music in some schools, secondary schools, and left, like I, I, I read recently, Samojuku and uh, uh, Felix Moba all tried to teach at the secondary school at that level, but they eventually left for Avaniku College of Education. So it's been at that tertiary level. Even today, so many secondary schools and primary schools don't have music teachers. So with that vacuum, has that problem has been standing on a very weak foundation. At the top level, we are, we are pretending we're doing well. But at the lower level that should feed the, the upper you know, part, there's nothing really going on. And that is the problem. So we need to address this thing, first and foremost, find people who are dedicated, who really know what they can do. Maybe we will do it at the annual level, set up a committee that will you know, draft curriculum for us. What, we, what all these things we're saying to find something, do it, so we can begin to approach government, right? From primary, secondary, and university and college, we have something that is ours, that will bring in our indigenous music. We are not saying that we don't want to learn lines and spaces, for instance, or you know, chords on things. No, no, no. But we can bring our own concepts, indigenous music, to explain these things. Like, I know there's a song, but that is domiso, domiso. Of course, the influence of Western music is there, but at least we can take it because since it is coming from our people, students, children may pay attention to learning that. Thanks. Thank you. Those raising hand, they can they can unmute themselves and say what they want to say. Go on now. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for for such a, a, a wonderful presentation. Uh, I just want to give, uh, I just want to start by this interruption. I think you have more than one one device. Okay. Uh, okay. I, I just want to, to to start by uh giving a reflection, uh in support of what what you were saying. Yeah, it's a uh, it's very interesting that uh we as uh, uh African scholars we need to to decolonize and uh indigenous to decolonize and indigenize uh music uh, uh studies. But at the same time, I think we also need to be uh, very careful especially when we are using some of uh, the terms, some of the terms that were uh, originated uh, by early uh, uh, outside uh, scholars. For example, uh, the concept of African, African music itself, I think is a bit uh, uh, problematic because uh, when we are talking and uh, presenting issues to do with this uh, uh, concept, it, it, it seems as if we are saying or we are portraying the we, we are saying um, these uh, traditions or these musical traditions in African countries they are stylistically homogeneous. Yet we do. Yet we tend to have uh, different 
uh, traditions in, 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 in different uh, African countries. So sometimes we need to be very uh, specific and uh, clear in terms of what type of uh, tradition we are talking about. And at the same time, I also realized that if you are saying African uh, music, we tend to send a message which suggests that maybe Africa is, uh, is, is, is not, it's, it's not a continent, it's a, it's, it's a country, to the extent that we are maybe trying to bunch these traditions uh, into a, 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 a terminology which tend to undermine uh, diversity. So sometimes we need to be very uh, careful so that we do not transmit these colonial legacies from one uh, generation to another. Yes, I do understand that according to Nzeu, there's this, uh, these two approaches, a holistic approach and singular approach, but at the same time, we need to be very uh, careful when we are using these terms. And uh, at the same time, I also think that renaming of uh, some of these traditions or even in our department, our departments, when it comes to the study of uh, African music tradition, is also a, a, a very important way or strategy of decolonizing. But at the same time, I think when we do renaming, we should also make sure that the new terms, for example, we can maybe shift from the concept of African music to African musical arts, whereby we are saying no. These traditions which we are talking about is not only about the music, but it involves dancing, it involves drumming, it involves singing, ululations. And when we are designing curriculums that are based on that holistic approach or that unitary approach, we should also make sure that we capture some of the artistic expressions that are captured by, by, by that time, by that term, so that we do not put much emphasis on the musical side of things and relegating other artistic expressions to imagine oppositions. Because we are saying in most African uh, countries or communities, it's not only about music, but it's a combination of different factors. And none of these factors do not define, cannot be used to define a specific tradition. For example, I come from Zimbabwe. If you are using indigenous languages, languages, for example, Shona, uh, before the, 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 the concept of music or, or dance, we say mutambo, which doesn't signify whether it's dance or it's music, but it's a holistic term that captures everything, the music, the dance, the context, the singing, the diff even non-musical elements. So if we are analyzing such conceptual framework, we'll see that there are a lot of elements that constitute this uh, uh, concept of, of Mutambo. So when it comes to designing our curriculums, we should take into consideration all those factors so that we don't follow uh, a, a kind of a Eurocentric centered type of a curriculum. Because what we are trying to do is we are trying to, to, to come up with a, a curriculum that are compatible with our own indigenous knowledge systems, our own indigenous musical traditions. So we should reflect that in our curriculums. And in, uh, uh, at last, I just want to, 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 to ask uh, a question. Um, I just want to know uh, strategies, the strategies which we are using uh, to shape um, the conceptual and epistemological frameworks which we are using to decolonize musical start in, in Nigeria. For example, in Zimbabwe, we have uh, concepts such as uh, Ubuntu, concepts such as Chivan, concepts such as Ukama, which are kind of Rela relational epistemologies, where we are saying these philosophies can be used to create indigenous uh, epistemologies or conceptual frameworks that can be used to understand or that can be used to explore uh, these indigenous uh, traditions from a holistic point of view. So I, I would also want to know from a Nigerian perspective, if you have indigenous uh, 
concepts or philosophies which we are using to support or to decolonize as well as indigenize the study of music from a Nigerian perspective. Because I believe that in the process of decolonization, it's like we are saying we need to to, 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 to integrate these philosophies, these philosophies in our curriculum. We should not just focus on sound. We should not just focus on, on, on music only, but we also need to, to integrate these philosophies in, in our curriculums. So that's my contribution and my question. Thank you very much. Anybody wants to respond to his question? Oh. Yes. <laughs> huh? yeah. You want to? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, maybe I let me let me let me respond to the oh, good good afternoon the question. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm not going. I'm not about to to answer the, to his question because I raised okay. my hand to. To, to comment and, and ask a question as well. May I? Or should I wait for, for the answer okay. for, or, or of the last question? Go ahead. I think, Joachim, you should go ahead. Joachim, you should go ahead and ask go your ahead. question. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Right. Turn the microphone on. Yeah. Thank you. Well, can first you, of all, I want to thank. Yes. yes. Now, now it's okay. okay. Uh, first of all, I want to thank everyone, the presenters, for for the wonderful presentations, the the very insightful thoughts that you have shared with us, and. Uh, once again, we are sharing the very same concerns in regards to music education, musical arts education in our countries in Africa. And it feels like it's the, the very same problems that since uh, McKinsey, Professor McKinsey started to bring them up and other researchers started, started to bring them up, the inclusion of um, very contextual, culture sensitive, uh, all these blah, blahs, curriculum, inclusivity and all this. My big concern is if we have the same problems, the very same Thoughts and there are so many curriculum thoughts, I mean, thoughts about curriculum already exposed and maybe some people try to implement, some countries try to implement teaching models based on our own indigenous knowledge, indigenous musical arts. And as researchers, I think maybe something that I haven't heard anyone sharing is what's going on that all the thoughts that have been already brought up are not working. I'm looking for literature that says, well, Zimbabwe, because I have literature from Zimbabwe, I haven't read so much about Nigeria, but from Zimbabwe, from Malawi, from with very nice proposals on very, you know, original curriculum thoughts, which, uh, which, which focus on local knowledge, traditional knowledge, indigenous knowledge, and, you know, culture sensitive curriculum proposals that I've seen, and teaching models also that I've seen. But the results from these, you know, these experiments, I don't think we are sharing this. What do we think about this? Because if something has been tried by two, three, four, you know, scholars, and it's still not working, so what is the problem? Is it speaking with the government? Is it training teachers as um, uh, NOTA has proposed to train teachers? 
and what's going on? Something is not working. It's not that we are not concerned with our own musical arts education. It's something is not working, even that we are think, thinking locally. This, this is my, my point of view on all of this. If someone has something to share about this, please. Um, yes, Joaquin. I think, um, I, I think I have an idea. Hello, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. Can somebody hear me? Okay, perfect. Yeah. I think I have, I have an idea of what is going on. The truth is we formulate all these good ideas, but within the school and they, they are not coordinated or they are not like in sync with what our governments uh, throw out to us. I'm using Nigeria, for example, in schools, I know and I speak with confidence that now the pieces that are being set for students to take in their wayek are more of uh, works composed by Nigerian, Ghanaian, and West African uh, uh, composers. That, uh, but these compositions are very, very African sensed. I know that that is going on now. Um, the big problem that I see is that most of the times when we, the teachers, we have come up with a problem, we have come up with solutions, syncing them with what our governments want becomes a problem. Because the way most of those in the government who, in fact, unfortunately, are the people who now set our curriculum for our schools, the way they think is uh, they think of the Western as superior. So uh, they would want their children, let me give for example, if you put a drum and a piano and you tell any uh, official, for example, what instrument do you, you want your child to play? Definitely it's going to be the piano. So I think it is a, a kind of mentality that this group also had talked about. You know, one of, one of us in our presentations have talked about. It's a kind of mentality that must be decolonized because if that mentality is not decolonized, whatever we do will not really like meet its roots. And that is why it looks as if nothing is being successful. I talked about storytelling, for example. My has just put up a show that came out, I mean, world class, and it was all based on a story. A story told by the students themselves and coordinated by their lecturers. But it came out so real that you would think it was a kind of script written by some famous uh, 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 writer or, or, or the like. So I think it, 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 we have to find a way to punch into our government. And when I mean government, because I consider myself to part of the government, but I mean the people, the real people who at the end of the day will be the one to formulate the curriculum. How I think the, what we should do, what we should begin to do now is to try to pierce that group if I ask any Nigerian, for example, who are doing for music, almost nobody will know. Because most of okay, them um, are not um, written by, you know, like specialized uh, uh, people, just like uh, Professor Onyeji, you know, noted. So uh, I think that is uh, one of the issues that we have. Uh, with right. Solomon, yes, we have concepts. We have also concepts in Nigeria, this concept of storytelling, the, 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 the concept of togetherness, of community. We also have it in most of our Nigerian uh, uh, cultures and, uh, and traditions. Again, we try to use them, but they are not gaining roots because of the uh, reasons that I had earlier uh, stated. Thank you. Okay. We need to round up now. We have um, less than two minutes to round this up. Um, there is a, a follow-up from Solomon's remark and, and, and question. I would like Professor Onyeji to look at this. Um, uh, whether there are transdisciplinary experiences in working with music to a more integrated way. 
simultaneously at cosmology, social organization, and all that in Nigerian institution. I don't know if Prof got what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I saw the question. Okay, um, please well, just look at it quickly. For in us, one minute, sir. Yes, in 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 uh, the higher oh, institution, for yeah. instance. I remember we had an attempt to, you know, integrate music, theater, arts in a project. But you see, because at that level, everybody is seeking dominance. We, we had that challenge of having, you know, theater people trying to, you know, uh, be more domineering because we were trying to do a play, you know, from both musical and you know, theater perspective. So they were giving this vibe that they, they should be dominant than music. You know, so we, we allow that, but the fact remains that, you know, in both in the cultural and, um, you know, even in the operatic, whether it's folk opera or Western opera, there's always that, you know, transdisciplinary, you know, relationship between music, theater, I mean, music, dance, drama, and all sorts, language, they have, they've been there and we've been exploring them. Our problem, mm -hmm. just to quickly look at what the first, uh, the Solomon, I think, uh, talked about, it's not that we don't have relevant ideas or concepts or notions, you know, of integrating, uh, you know, the music or the people or the culture in whatever we do. But the problem has always been that, like they said, government stipulates certain, you know, certain things, the culture, the benchmark and all that. So we struggle to maintain what they have. But, and that's why there's a lot of talk of changing what we have right now, but it's not been done because well, even if you change it, you have to face the hurdle of you know bringing it to the acceptance of the government. So, but that's what we are trying to do. We have all the ideas. People okay. have been presenting things, but like we said, it is time to sit down and work out a curriculum that we can now take along. I said this is what we want, and probably from a national point of view, of our association of Nigerian musicologists, we can then pursue, you know, that purpose of having something that is original and to satisfy. Um, I think Solomon's uh, uh, issue of uh, having uh, music, having the different names or the same name, we have all those things. In our Igbo land, for instance, when we say Ebu, it confers Professor. everything. You know, so we will end it there. Probably we can engage yeah. in further dialogue as we, as we move on. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, bro. Um, I think um, we would hand it over to Carlos so that we can wrap this up. There's one other question coming in from Okoro. I don't know if you can just put up your mic and speak for one minute. Anthony Okoro, please. Uh, okay, I was just saying that um, while we are trying to get the government to um, develop a curriculum that is more decolonized, more Africa-centric, or even uh, develop one ourselves, there are certain aspects of the decolonization thing that we can quickly do ourselves. For instance, uh, in many of the tertiary institutions, uh, the piano is made compulsory for the students. And you find that the students typically will do maybe the voice and the piano or some other Western instrument. So I was asking, why not make it compulsory for each student to study at least one African instrument, African instrument? That is something that we can quickly do, especially at the tertiary institutions. Um, Prof, these things are writing towards you because of your present st your status now in our association. Well, as you said, we will continue this discussion. Um, okay. And then um, I, I thought that was a great comment, but let let me say, um, using the piano as a dominant instrument in our institutions okay. does not mean that the instrument must be used in the Western sense. We have Africanized this instrument to a large extent, and there's a lot of domestic and African pianism works yeah. that have, so to say, indigenized or fairly decolonized the instrument and many other instruments. So we can, we are not saying, please bear, bear us witness. The idea of decolonization does not mean we will throw away everything Western. No, we're talking about rooting our music to our culture and operating from that standpoint, but also accepting other things. So having a piano, as a musical instrument is good, like he said, well, we might, you know, do away with making it compulsory, but also it is compulsory because of how, you know, everywhere you go, you see keyboard, 
as one of the first instruments that you can use to make music. So there's no, it's not the idea, it's not the problem. The problem is what do you do with that instrument? It's like the, the voice. We have everybody's carrying voice. What do you do with it? We can Africanize, we can do we use our voice from the African perspective. We can also use it from the Western perspective. But having the piano is not the problem. But what do you do with that instrument? How do you use it? That is the problem. What is the, the notion you have around the instrument? A lot of people see it as percussive instrument. A lot of people see it as Western classical instrument. So it depends on what you do with the instrument. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. I think we'll end it here. Uh, thank you very much to all the presenters. And thank you for all those that have contributed to this dialogue. Um, at this point, we have just one minute. So I'll just hand over back to Carlos. And then let's wrap it up from here. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. We have actually come to the end of our final session of the ICTM 2021. So it has been a great learning um, and heartfelt experience and a great opportunity for us all to debate decoloniality. So I would like to thank uh, all the presenters you know, for sharing their practices and their thoughts with us. Um, I'd like to thank Carlos especially for handling all the technical aspects so efficiently and for editing all the videos and to Eric also for assisting all the way from Canada. Yeah, so we look forward to seeing all of you at the World Conference in Lisbon in 2022, next year, where we can continue this conversation. So thank you very much again and happy holidays to everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs> See you next bye, year. Yeah? Next year. Bye, everyone. Bye, bye, bye. Who came, bye, bye, bye. Who came <laughs> <laughs>